Good evening, everybody. Steve Goody here from Property Tutors. Um, just testing the technology here. If you guys could um, find the questions portion of the software and in the control panel there, and just chuck a quick g'day in there, or um, even tell us where you're logging in from tonight, would be great. We'll just make sure everybody's online properly. Good evening, everybody's chucking a comment in there, that's excellent. Papamoa, Pukuru Bay, fantastic. Oh, even a couple of random Aucklanders in there, fantastic. <laughs> and loud and clear from Petoni, I think I can see you from here. Fantastic. All right. This evening's webinar, um, I specifically wanted to talk about um, what's hot in the Wellington property market this evening. And um, I have um, two special guests with me this evening, which has shrunk down to one special guest. So now Joanne here is with me and she's a very, very special guest. Say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, kicking some questions back and forth and making a few comments. And if you guys have any questions or any comments that you want to make, just chuck it in that um in that control center and that software, and we're going to throw some ideas around there and just see who's um, who thinks what's going on out there in the in the property market in Wellington at the moment. Um, I'm going to run through a few deals that a few of my clients have done, and um, give you a bit of an idea of where a lot of my clients have started their investing and um, where a few of them are at right now. Okay, so let's roll into it, shall we? Um, first thing I wanted to um, sort of get into is um, the the three. Um, top reasons why Wellington has um, really warmed in the last few months. Now, I keep uh, a fairly good accurate record of how many listings there are for residential property on Trade Me in the Lower Hutt area at any one time. And I've kept this record for two, three years. And the worst time in the market in, in recent history has actually dropped down to 498 listings in the Lower Hutt market. And um, just recently, it was down to 511 and in the last two or three weeks, it's popped back up to 565 listings. And there's three key and irrefutable reasons why that is and why that's actually happening. And um, this is this is the reasons, the way, the way I see it. The, the first one being that um, the election is over. Now, I know you probably look at that as property investors and, and laugh a little bit and go, well, why would anybody hold back? Why would anybody stop doing anything because of um, the election? But you, would, you wouldn't believe how many people actually do do that. I'm working on a, a fairly decent-sized commercial property deal at the moment, and um, I was dealing with um, both Victoria University and Housing New Zealand, and neither of them could stomach making any sort of decision in the last few weeks until the election was over. Um, they wanted to see who was in government. In government. And, um, you know, it's been a very, very predictable outcome. Uh, and it's a very um, easy-as-you-go, situation-normal sort of outcome as well. So I think that that has placated a lot of people's concerns, and um, that's been a major reason why the average number of properties has popped right up in, in Wellington and all over New Zealand in the last um, two weeks. So reason number two, um, daylight savings. Now, I hate to say this because it just, it just sounds dumb. It just sounds stupid. But in all reality, daylight savings makes a huge difference to the number of houses that are listed and sold in New Zealand. If you've got a house and you've got a, somebody doing an open home and they can do an open home until 5.30 because that's when it gets dark, you're actually missing out on an hour, hour and a half worth of uh, prime viewing time every day when people aren't at work. Additionally, a lot of people list their houses in the summer to try and get the, the premium price point for them because you can't really trudge around in the backyard if it's a, if it's a mud pack, mud pool. Um, but once once the weather starts warming up, daylight savings comes into place, you know, it's a lot easier to see these open homes. Do you think that's true, Joy? Yeah, very true. The nights are longer and everybody's feeling better. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the other thing is obviously that a lot of Wellington houses are actually positioned either on the flat or on hillsides for the sun as well. And so they actually work in an optimal way in the summer months as well. So the number two, daylight savings. Number three, um, First home buyers have learned a value ratio restrictions. So in the last quite a few months, the New Zealand government has 
decreed to New Zealand banks that they can't lend more than a certain number of their loans to people when they've got more than a 90% loan to value ratio. And they're trying to control all lending at 80% or less loan to value ratio. So higher deposits have been the norm. And people have had to borrow money off the parents, pull out KiwiSaver and, and, you know, pull a few things out to basically be able to get into their first home and um, to put a decent deposit together. And so um, this has been slated as being a, a policy that would be removed rather quickly. And it was they were talking about the end of this year or the start of next year. Now, what hasn't gone through the press and what they haven't publicised is that a lot of banks have been allowed to actually relax that already. And we are talking to brokers all the time now who are getting more than 80% loan to value ratios through the banks. And they've been able to start push those things around a little bit, which has just been fantastic. So we've, we're really seeing a difference in there as well. And so this third reason is, is my, in my opinion, the reason why average days to sell has stayed about the same, even though there's been a large influx of maybe 50 or 60, particularly in our little region, more properties actually physically on the market. So with those three things in mind, it being a summer market and um, daylight savings, warmer, longer, light, lit, better lit days, loan to value ratio changes and um, the stability of a regular and predictable economy in, in Wellington, um, that's, those are the reasons I see Wellington being um, you know, pretty hot in the next um, four to six months at least for uh, both buy and hold investing and also property trading. Now, the, the trading side of it is predominantly based on a little bit of speculation, a little bit of talent, and an awful lot of um, hard work, in my opinion, whereas buy and hold tends to be quite a bit easier. You're looking at cash flow, and you're looking at, and when you look at cash flow, you're basically looking at whether people um, actually have a job or not. If they can afford to pay the mortgage, then they'll buy the house. So um, what we love to see in Wellington is the recent stats that have come out in the last couple of weeks showing that Wellington, once again, leads the country in the highest income per capita um, portion of the, of the economy. And that's, um, that's very, very helpful to us buy and hold investors in Wellington because when your tenants can't pay the rent, um, yes, yeah, hard to stay in business as a property investor as well. Okay, so moving on, um, Wellington's biggest property myth there is definitely a property myth in place when it comes to Wellington property investing. And um, there's definitely a lot of suburbs in Wellington whose average price is up there with some of the Auckland suburbs. And the photo I've got on the back of the slide, as you can see on this, shows um, the central city. You're looking down um, from Oriental Bay, Roseneath, looking down into the city, and then up into the hills behind it to Mount Cook and Kandala. And the myth is that that's where you have to be to make any money in property investing in Wellington. Um, and you absolutely don't. Um, this is where you want to live. It's not necessarily where you have to invest to make great money. Now, I'm going to try and explain my, my, my thinking on that by telling you how I did it to a degree. And um, I think it's kind of similar to the way Joanne next to me here started as well, given her property history as well. But let me throw you mine just briefly first. I first started property investing in Lower Hutt a uh, good you know, 15 plus mumble years ago and um, buying a, a couple of you know, fairly nasty blocks of flats behind the hospital in, in, in Lower Hutt here. And well, always my intention with those was to renovate them, add lots of value to them, create a very good cash flow and a good yield and then be able to afford to buy some really nice looking flash capital gain houses in Wellington that you might be able to look at from the view on the on the slide that we've got here. Because I know that central Wellington has better capital gain than a lot of the Hutt Valley suburbs. I get that. But I also know that Hutt Valley has much better cap cash flow. And you can't sometimes afford to have both at the same time. What I mean by that is that Oriental Bay average yields might be 4 or 5%. Lower Hutts might be 8 or 9%. Sometimes you need the cash flow. Sometimes you need the capital gain and the equity. So um, I know, Joanne, you started out um, investing maybe a, a similar, in a similar cyclical way. Would that be correct? Yeah, that'd be right. Um, the work's done out in the Hutt Valley, but the, well, in, the, in the suburbs, but the, the holds are definitely in town. But yep. The money's 
out of the Hutt Valley. It is. Yeah, the cash flow, if you like, yeah. is out of the Hutt Valley. Yeah. So, so I did some quick numbers to get around this. And, um, you know, Oriental Bay, I suppose, is, is the, the Parnell or the Herne Bay or the Remuera of, of Wellington. But I just wanted to grab a suburb that was a little bit more average, a little bit more normal, a little bit more, um, you know, domestic, if you like. So what I grabbed was some numbers on Kilburnie. Um, they work with me here a little bit because there is a few numbers here and I'll, I'll, I'll work my way through them. Um, Kilburnie's median sale price for the last three months has been $495,000. Those stats come from the RPNZ website. Um, so what is what it's basically saying is that on average, every house in Kilburnie has sold for around the $495,000 price point in the last three months. So if you look at that and you go... Okay, median house rental figure being four hundred and seventy-eight dollars per week, and that's that. Those stats are coming from um, www.mingovernment.govt.nz, so the Ministry of um, Housing's um, registered website. So four hundred and seventy-eight dollars a week at fifty-two weeks rental is a just just a bit shy of twenty-five thousand dollars a year. If you then divide that by the purchase price of the average house at four ninety-five, it gives you about a five percent yield. Now, interest rates at Main Street banks at the moment are hovering around 6, 6.2%. So that's going to basically mean that after you've taken rates and insurance out of that figure, that this property is going to be what we consider to be cash flow negative, which means that you're going to have to feed a few bucks into this to own it on a weekly basis. And once you've done that, um, it's going to pay for itself for the rest of the way. So you might have to um, put in um, $100 a week or something to be able to basically own this property. So that's fine. Um, we can live with that. So let's look at another suburb. Now, I just picked another suburb fairly much at random, to be fair. And what I picked was Moera. And Moera is um, on the Wainui hillside portion of the Petoni foreshore. Um, it's a state house, flat and unit, predominant um, working class suburb. And its median price for the last three months has, has hovered around that 290 thousand dollar price point the average house rental in that area is 392 dollars a week it's, uh, so the the average cost of a house there is dramatically less than Kilburnie, but the rents haven't actually dropped all that much and we see this in the hut valley all the time that um, people underestimate the rents in the hut valley they're actually not that far off central wellington rents so 392 at 52 weeks is twenty thousand dollars we're on the bottom line of this slide here if we divide that $20,000 into the 290 as we did in the top example, it gives us a 7% yield. Now, 7% yield is getting pretty close to cash flow neutral, which is when it pays or covers its own back uh, and doesn't actually cost us anything. So what we predominantly do in the Hutt Valley market is try and buy for less than the average, try and rent it for higher than the average, and try and push that yield up over 85 9%. Are those the sort of yields you've been looking at? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Great. Yep. So that, that constitutes either neutral or cash flow positive. So what we're finding is um, the lower heart market's been really, really fantastic in the last few years for finding great cash flow, but the capital gain hasn't moved on as much as Central Wellington does. And Central Wellington tends to lag behind Auckland about two years, in my opinion. And I'm looking at um, no um, high-rise development of any real scale happening in Central Wellington at the moment. There's no new subdivisions in the Wellington suburbs at all. There's sections being chopped in half, but nobody's coming out and opening up a big field and putting in 100 new houses anywhere. And there's pent-up demand in the back of that. And so i, I got to imagine, and I know that um, I was talking to Matt Gilligan earlier in the day, and he was agreeing with me that um, we have in Wellington what, what constitutes to a degree a perfect storm. We've got increasing population, we've got nowhere to house them, and rents are starting to move. The next thing that happens after rents move is that values move as well. And um, that's why predominantly myself and a lot of my clients are buying, renovating, and selling houses in the lower hut market where the cash is easier to make. It's there, it's sitting there, huge buyer pool for the house once you've finished it. And then we're investing that money into larger better quality houses that then re then demand better quality tenants in central Wellington. Um, and we're seeing that um, sort of happening again and again. 
And uh, I know, Joanne, you live in a central Wellington suburb yeah. that I own some houses <laughs> in as well. And that we've been looking at that sort of thing for the last you know few months together. Yeah. And um, and trading a lot of stuff in the Hutt Valley as well. Yeah, to get the cash flow to, to invest in the city. Yeah, mm. magic. All right, so w where are we looking? A um, bit of luck, you can see my little pointer pen here. I'm, I'm doing a few laps of the harbour in here at the moment. But central Wellington, I consider that to be, you know, anything from Wadestown down, really. Wadestown down. Hutt Valley, um, we're in the central lower Hutt area here. So we're in Moera, Gracefield, we're in Ava, we're at Apuni, Fairfield, Nainai. And we do a lot of Stokes Valley as well. As well. So what we're doing is we're working in the areas that are lower socioeconomic areas in the Hutt Valley because you could pick up fantastic deals on really quite scruffy ex-state houses that haven't been renovated, haven't had the um, money spent on, on them in the last few years to get them up to value. And quite often, my clients are buying these houses, renovating them, selling them, and then a, an investor purchases them, puts a tenant in them, the tenant wrecks it, and we buy it back off them again in two or three years' time after that and, and continue the same process again which, you know, is, as ridiculous as it sounds, happens more than you'd imagine. Um, okay, so I'm just going to hit a couple of quick questions here. Um, okay, do these figures take into account rates and insurance? No, they don't. Um, those are our, um, gross figures, meaning that they are, we haven't netted off the rates and, and insurance numbers on that. On those types of properties in Wellington, you could allow for, say, $65, $70 a week to cover rates and insurance and about $55 a week in the hut market to cover rates and insurance per week as well. But all it's going to do is take that yield down about 0.7 of a percent on both of those deals, just to give you a basic idea. Okay, let's move on. Um, so I've got a couple of clients with me here, except only one of them turned up. <laughs> so on the left here, I've got um, Aaron, who's going to get a lot of grief as soon as I find him. No, he's um, he's working really hard at the moment. He's got a couple of really massive deals, and one of them um, I've got a couple of photos of. And I know most of his deals really well, so I'm going to run through those with um, with Joanne here, and, and she, she knows a few of his deals as well. And then on the right there, I've got... Um, Joanne, who's going to talk about a few of her deals as well. But uh, Aaron, unfortunately, really wanted to make it. But if, but about 10 minutes ago, he was still under a house somewhere. So, um, yeah, we'll let him off this time. So this is um, this is a really interesting deal of Aaron. Some of you might have seen it on our Facebook fan page recently. And um, we did a wee competition called Guess the Profit on this. Now, this is a property in Pinehaven in Upper Hutt. Aaron actually went along and um, made an offer on this house and offered the people $300,000 and um, they turned him down. They wanted a lot more than that. And a week later, he went to the mortgagee sale for the same house and um, he bought it for $250,000. So they managed to fairly uniquely do themselves out of fifty grand very easily. Um, so Aaron grabbed this deal and did a nice tidy renovation on it. He put some really nice colours into it. He fixed everything, painted the outside, painted the roof, replaced a few windows, redid the carpet, and um, he sold this property. And the people who he sold it to um, the first time didn't go unconditional. And so he sold it for the second time at about six or $7,000 more money. And those people paid the deposit and then tried to pull out of the deal and didn't want to settle it. And so he gave them their deposit back and sold it for the third time at another $10,000 higher than the second time. Yeah, these things do happen. It's hilarious when it does. Actually, it's kind of stressful, but we got there. Um, in the end, after purchasing the property, all of the costs of renovating it, all of the costs of an agent to sell the property again, holding costs, insurance, rates, mortgage costs, um, and also agent's fees, and everything else apart from tax and GST, Aaron made $125,000 on this one house. That's pretty <laughs> Joanne's shaking her head. Uh, it, it is really good. And I'd like to just say now that this is not the average. Um, this is an outstanding deal. Uh, this was a really, really one well done project. It was quick. He was in and out of there real fast. He had a lot of value with a lot of paint and a lot of color and just a lot of cleaning up. He had his crew of guys rip into this house, in and out of it very quickly, back on the market. Everybody loved it, and it sold rather quickly as well. Um, 
I'd love to say we make 125 grand on every house we touch, but we just don't. But I tell you what, we did on this one, <laughs> and we'll take it. That's that's a fairly outstanding result. Um, stoked with that one. So this is another one of Aaron's. Um, here, this is in um, Lincoln Street in Tower. Uh, it was a, a fairly quick renovation, um, apart from the fact that it was a complete dive when he bought it. It was overrun with gorse and mould, and it was it was pretty nasty. He really did pull off all the scrim and all of the stuff on the inside of the house, have to do quite a lot of reframing, a lot of construction. Uh, when he was finished, it turned out to be, you know, a really quite a nice looking place. He's removed a few walls around to make some living areas a little better and stuff, and that worked really well. And as you can see with these photos, he's uh, used a professional house dressing company as well, which has um, really added a lot of value to the end product. Okay, so that's that one. Um, I'm just going to hit another couple of quick questions. How do banks view trading? Do they mind having a mortgage for such a short period of time? Yeah, good question. Um, usually, yes, they do. They get quite grumpy about it. And then you tell them, hey, look, I'm planning on doing this seven or eight times a year. Uh, I don't mind paying maybe a slightly larger interest rate for that and having a redraw facility. And, um, hey, you know, I'm not going to borrow the money and give it back. I'm going to borrow the money and give it back and then borrow it and then give it back and then borrow it and then give it back. And once they get their heads around that, they actually become a lot more reasonable. You'd be amazed. Um, um, in a flat market with minimal house price gains, is it a better idea to go after a long-term rental income cash flow approach? Yeah, good question. Um, really, I think, and, and particularly in Wellington market, there is actually a split market there. I would say, yes, for long-term holds, it's better to get slightly less income and have them locked in for a... 12 or a 24 month term or have corporates but a lot of that comes down to the quality of the house that you have and the house that you have actually attracts the tenants or clients if you want to call them that that it actually deserves and so if you have a really tidy rental it's going to attract people who are a better quality tenant they're going to stay longer um, I, I personally look at some of the trades that we do when we've added masses amounts of equity in it and we give a bit of a discount to get it to sell, and sometimes look at it and go to the client, hey, look, we really should keep this one. There's just too much good money that we're giving away to actually physically sell it. And there is a toss-up to be had there. And um, we've got a few smart boffins in the, in the accounting department, if you like, who could help us with that to make sure that we don't um, taint ourselves and keep ourselves you know, in the right side of that as well. Okay. Sorry if we're having a few audio issues out there as well. We'll find our way through it. Okay, so this next property is uh, Rata Street in Nainai. This is right behind the school in Rata Street. Pretty um, standard, quick renovation. Um, rolled that one over. I think he made about thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars on that one. This one's in Narana Place in Upper Hutt. This is one of one of Aaron's first hold properties. Now he. Went looking for this property, found it, got it under offer for a really good price, and then had a conversation with the owner. And the owner said, well, look, I love this house. I want to keep owning it, but I can't afford to own it right now. And so Aaron did a wee deal with her and said, okay, well, look, I don't mind selling it back to you um, for a, some sort of profit in a few years' time. And so what I'll do is I'll buy it off you right now, and you become the tenant, sign a tenancy agreement, and at the end of the tenancy agreement, we'll get it valued, and we'll look at if you're in a position to actually purchase it back off him. And so the tenant of this property is the lady that he bought it off, and she's signed a tenancy agreement that runs for five years. So he's got a set tenant who is in the property and treats it like she owns it, because she kind of does, and he's got a really good cash flow return off it, and in five years' time, he'll probably sell it back to him, which really has saved her. She loves the house, doesn't want to move away. None of the neighbours or the tent or, or, or anybody around the area or her friends realise that she no longer owns the house. It's nobody else's business. Um, and there you go. So she's kind of helped, he's kind of helped that lady out quite nicely. Have you seen one like that at all? Yeah. We have a, um, we've done a few like that where they've, um, they've stayed in the property or the property's been delayed where they've stayed in it and then purchased it later. It can work really well, can't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Excellent. Um, this is Della Grove. Aaron got this one under offer, and he actually traded this without doing a renovation directly to another member of our group. 
um, and that person ended up, um, you know, holding it for a really good I think nine and a half, ten percent um, net income on this. This one's up in uh, Silverstream. This one is um, Main Street Tower. This is a quick trade as well. I think you might have taken about a five thousand dollar quick fee and rolled this one over. Um, two flats in Clouston Park traded once again. No reno on this. Just handed on for a, a quick fee to an, another investor. Um, once again, same thing, little unit and tighter. This one he traded for a quick fee to another investor and then was paid another fee to complete the renovation for that investor. Um, this is Wainui Road. This is um, Aaron himself standing there putting in posts to um, put a fence around it to uh, put a couple of double car pads in front. This is um, Wainui Road in Lower Hutt, which leads up to the Wainui Hill. And this fairly classic looking deco house was originally owned by the uh, manager of the Griffins Biscuit Factory right behind it. And uh, we bought it, um, or Aaron did, in a fairly nasty state of disrepair. Uh, he spent a good four or five weeks renovating this property, and I think he made about fifty or sixty thousand dollars profit on this one deal. Um, ticked over really, really quickly. Um, one of the only minor problems with it was it had this incredibly solid poured cement fireplace <laughs> right through the middle of the house, um, which created some sort of interesting angled corners that we needed that space. And so Aaron said to me one day, well, how hard can it be to, get, <laughs> to take a Kango hammer to this thing and get rid of it? Well, it appears that it took three Kango hammers three days worth of bashing. And of course, with Kango hammers hitting cement inside a house like this, nobody else could or was prepared to work in the entire house for those three days as well. So. Yeah, I think the learning curve there was find out if it's a poured cement fireplace before you try and have a go at it. Um, yeah, I think avoid he would it. avoid it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fair call. I think he would have left it there if he'd known it was horrific. Uh, this is a nice little pretty reno in um, Hinyamaya Street, which is um, just off White's Line East in Waiwatu. Uh, just a nice little, what we call a granny flat down the back um, of a block of three. Um, bought, renovated, sold for about twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars profit in no time at all. Now, up until now, I think everything we've basically looked at has been Aaron's first year working with me. His first twelve months, believe it or not, he did an awful lot in that first twelve months. Um, this next one is uh, House in Hardy Street. It was um, pitifully ugly. Um, he just did a, a quick trade to another investor on that one. This is Hazel Street. This was a uh, ex state house that was taken off the site of the pack and save in Upper Hutt when they built the pack and save and was put on an empty site and they actually de-bricked it. They took all the bricks off, put the frame of the house down with a roof on top of it and then got brand new bricks and re-bricked the entire house. And he um, traded this one to another investor and then did the renovation for them and charged them another fee on top of that for that. And uh, there you go, that, that moved along pretty quickly. This is the house that I believe that he's currently still underneath this <laughs> evening. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, 4 Carlisle Street in Island Bay. This is behind the Island Bay School, um, sort of Melbourne Road direction. For those of you that know Wellington very well at all. Now, this, this property has, was, um, it's fair to say, a fair um, mess when we bought it. The property um, was a deceased estate, and the gentleman that had been living in the property was well into his 80s, and his grandfather had built the house originally and it was one of those um, there was grass growing through the floorboards uh, there was not a lot of running water and I don't think there was actually any electricity um, in the in the property um, and it had an outdoor oven which was rather interesting um, so what Aaron did was he decided that you know the small reno deals are great big ones you know probably make a bit more money on and he could get his he could he was at a point at that at that stage in his investing, when he was well funded enough and he had a good enough reputation with a few joint venture partners who would fund and put the money into the deal, that he could get into something a bit more, a, a bit larger and a bit more noisy. And so, what he's done with this house is he's jacked it up, done a bit of excavation underneath, lifted the entire house right up, and where the open fresh timber around the bottom is, he's now put a ring around the bottom of the building and cinder block. He's re-roofed it. He's got a paint job going on it. There's decks front and back. 
um, to give it some flat space and he's putting a double garage just to the left of where this big tree is in the photo um, and that should add you know a couple of hundred exactly yeah massive profit to this one add to that the fact that you're up on a hill with um, east facing sun and island bay looking at the water um, yeah it should be a huge reno he's um he must be pretty close to finishing it you might imagine this was a really interesting one um 10 whiteley street uh i was hoping you'd have some more completed pictures on this for us today but um this was a 17 bedroom retirement home in upper hut that nobody else wanted and nobody would touch it so what aaron did was he cut it in half and put a cinder block wall down the middle of it and gave each end of this massive massive home a a single internal access garage and made it into two large homes and he took the ability to have such a lot of plumbing in the property and he made one a five bedroom with four bathrooms and made the other one a three bedroom with three bathrooms because he had so much plumbing and so many small <laughs> rooms a pretty much a pretty bathroom much a per bunch. person yeah. yeah and this is his 20th deal in under two years and he's very nearly finished this one as well a lot of these ramps have now gone the place is just being painted um, the gardens on the outside are being finished the carpets in the paints in and the furnishings are in and these should be on the market in the next few days uh, this is the end of it this um, this big piece of glass sort of looks out on the park at the back there the defining line where he split the two in half is about where it turns into a two-story there this whole back portion became a three-bedroom the whole front portion, I think, is a is a five bedroom property, and um, this 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 property couldn't be used for a boarding um, a boarding house. It couldn't be used for a retirement home. It couldn't be used for virtually anything else except for a, a, a massive massive house. And he's found a, a really decent creative way of, of turning that around and, and making it mm. into something profitable. Sometimes that's all it takes. Uh, Forty five All Crescent. Um, this was interesting. A few houses back, we looked at Hinemoa Street. One day, Aaron's agent brought him an offer, and it said, um, we'd like to buy your Hinemoa Street property, but we can't go unconditional until we've sold our property. So my advice to Aaron was, well, where's their property, and does that need to be renovated as well? Well, this was their dated property. 45 All Crears was the house that they wanted to sell so that they could buy Hinemoa Street. So in the end, we bought 45 All Crez, um, jokingly to make the Hinemoa Street property go unconditional. And so we made 30, 31,000 on the Hinemoa Street property, and we made 50,000 on the <laughs> All Crez property. <laughs> Just one of those ridiculous things. You ended up making more money on the one that you bought by accident, so to speak. Uh, once again, a fairly stunning job on the inside of this property. It, it really came up, you know, looking, looking pretty cool. And these are the um, Bunnings kitchens that we get a really good discount on as well. Uh, this is a central hut suburb. Um, 10 Henry Street, uh, an upper hut. This is a straight trade. He rolled this one over. Linfield Street. Ooh, do we recognise this one, Joanne? We do recognise this one. Excellent. So Aaron purchased this property and decided to trade this one to Joanne sitting next to me here. So um, I've got a few more photos of how this ended up looking. We'll rip into that shortly. More questions here. Could you please talk a bit about more about how banks uh, look at multiple property dealings in a short period? Um, I could, and I could spend hours and hours on it, but I'll tell you what, I'm bringing a mortgage broker along to our um, Property Masters event, uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, and he'll stand on stage and he'll tell you exactly how you can do that stuff. Um, we've um, developed a few strategies and a few allegiances with banks, both public and private banks, so that we can fund a lot more deals than most people normally can so um, i'll get into that a bit more at that stage if that works for you what's about ird look at the profits and income in general yeah absolutely when you make profits like this you're going to pay some tax um you're going to pay something like 30 percent tax plus gst on top of that um, which is a bit painful but to be fair all i can say is that it's worth it because um you're not paying tax until you're making profits so um kind of who cares um just wondering if you have any deals that don't go to plan where you've made a loss. Yeah, good question. It does happen. Um, we work very, very hard on making it not happen very often at all. Um, our strike rate is, in my opinion, pretty good. Joanne, what do you think? Yeah, I reckon um, strike rate's very good. I, 
I think there's always a way around that you don't have to make a loss. There's always lots of other ideas that, that um, other ways of doing things that, um, that can always keep you in a positive situation, even if it's for short term or if you want to hold it for a long term. Um, there's ways of working around with that. Yep, absolutely. Another question here, presuming some of these buildings need um, the building consent, do you get much hassle from the councils in Wellington? Um, if it needs a building consent, we apply for it, we go for it, we don't sort of fudge stuff if we, you know, at all, because we are predominantly looking to then on sell these properties, and if you fudge it, the person you're selling it to will nearly always get a building report or go to council, and you'll get found out. So it just it's just a pain in the butt. So it's much better to do stuff properly up front. Um, Predominantly, the council in Lower Hutt in the last year, two years, has actually not been too bad, to be fair. Um, they've got a 20-day commitment, so if you put your permit in, you, you have 20 days, and then they come back and either sell you to make some changes or that it's been approved. Uh, and quite often, if we know there's going to be a load-bearing wall, for instance, removed and it's going to require a permit, we'll quite often um, um, go for long settlement so that we can get that paperwork all into the council early. Okay, going to move on. This is one of Aaron's next deals. This is 5 Durham. Um, it was actually that ugly in person, this mustard-coloured catastrophe in Porua. Um, it's a five, six-bedroom house, and he bought it for less than $200,000. Um, he put it on the market. It didn't sell for the money he wants, so he put it into his whole portfolio and kept this one for cash flow. So Aaron's um, had some pretty outstanding deals. Um, in 24 months, he's... I've got a number there. It says 151 grand in equity, and I was hoping he'd turn up himself so I could update that because it's not correct. Plus, he's made 1.3 million dollars in actual cash profits. Now, he hasn't banked 1.3 million dollars because he's used a lot of joint venture partners, and sometimes he's gone to them and said, "Hey, I'll, I'll I've found this property. I'll do the renovation. If you pay for it, I'll split it 50/50 with you. I'll split the profit 50/50 with you." And so it probably made about half a million dollars, maybe $600,000. So, you know, don't cry into your suit for <laughs> poor Aaron too much, you know. He's doing just fine, don't you worry. Plus with his hold investments or his passive investments like the Nerano properties and bits and pieces, he's made $610 per week passive from those. So the portfolio he's managed to put together is actually netting a 9.8% return. Um, and, and I think that's a fairly outstanding result, really, for some, somebody in 16, 18, 24 months to put together. That's amazing. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? He's been peddling pretty hard, which is why he's probably still under a house or filling his van full of tools right now. Um, not all of these have been trade deals, um, but this is a list of the trade deals that he has put together. So in the 24 months that he's been working with me, Aaron's bought these properties or traded these properties. He's purchased $6.2 million in real estate spent nearly a million dollars renovating them to pick up $1.3 million in profits. Now, um, yeah, I think that's that's really outstanding. That's a huge, huge result. So um, let's have a quick look at trading versus buy and hold. Um, this is one of the equity deals that Aaron picked up early on. This is an upper hut. It's in um, Bonnie Glen Crescent, an upper hut. And it's a house in the front, a garage, and then there's a flat in the back as well. It's cash flow positive, returns about 10%, has sitting tenants in it, and he picked up $91,000, meaning the price he paid for it was $91,000 less than what it actually valued at. So he picked up some paper equity on that deal. This is uh, at Arareno Street. As you can see, it's got the railway tracks running right across the back of it, but it's actually very central and strengthened. Um, it's a hideous green colour. He painted it. And um, he turned this three into a four-bedroom house pretty quickly and picked up $63,000 in equity. Uh, he's now holding this because on the left you can see a small garage. He's going to knock that over. There's a section to the left of that that he also owns in the deal. He's going to put another house on there, which is going to turn it into about a 16% yield on the one title. <laughs> Frustrated, Joanne? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, <laughs> it's a good deal. This is one of the early ones that he just could not bear to trade to somebody else because he could see so much value in it. Um, this is a Big block of flats in Cannons Creek in Porua. Uh, we picked these up at Mortgagee Sale. There's four of them in this picture. Each one of the four is a three-bedroom property. Um, Aaron traded these on to another investor. Uh, that investor then did a very tidy renovation, painted the fences, painted the properties, tidied them up on the inside, polished all the floors, 
and that investor um, with a sixty thousand dollar reno has changed it from a purchase price of three hundred to a new valuation of five eighty, picking up you know a big yeah, hunk of equity, yeah. and also re- turning it into a thirteen percent net return for himself. And so Aaron traded that for a, a flat fee, and the investor he gave it to, who's also part of their property shooter's family, if you like, um, is now banking 13% net returns and, and loving that one as well. Uh, full occupancy in this one as well. We haven't had anybody out of there yet, so, you know, that one's good to go. Okay, so um, that's Aaron. It gives you a bit of a rundown of who Aaron is. Um, he's, he's a bit of a superstar, but um, to give you the flip side of that con- of that continuum, if you like, um, I was able to explain most of Aaron's deals, whereas we've actually got Joanne here who's going to explain through a few mm. of her deals. Right. So tell us how you came about this one. This was a very interesting property. Actually, Aaron um, purchased this property and he traded it to, to me. Um, the house inside, it looks okay from the outside, but once you actually got inside, there was actually no floor in the, the laundry. And the bathroom you really would not have wanted to ever use. The kitchen cupboards didn't have any doors on them and um, the place was a bit of a mess inside. So we, we, Aaron traded this to us and um, he purchased it for two fifty five, and we spent um, quite a bit of time. There was, um, we changed it from, it was already a three bedroom And we changed it around. We made it a three-bedroom plus a study and completely moved the kitchen out. Um, And I think there's a photo. We added a deck out the back. We landscaped it, painted, carpeted, um, moved a few walls around, and um, it came out such a nice little house. It's a lovely little place. Tell me about this bright orange door. (laughs) It's a bit of a trademark, that bright orange door. Yep. You see a few of them around now? We do see a few of them around now. (laughs) So that's the kitchen. The kitchen wasn't there. The kitchen, um, we moved down the end and opened that right up. So there was French doors going out onto the deck. And you can just see the corner of the backyard. It was a fully fenced section. So um, it was perfect for, you know, family, young family. There was a single garage downstairs with a, um, down on the bottom with a, a room above that. And there was also um, a big shed, but a big shed out the back of here. So there was plenty of storage. There's the bathroom that, if you'd ever seen the original bathroom, you would have died. <laughs> <laughs> so the numbers on the steel. You, you yeah. bought this one for two fifty five. Yep. The renovation cost eighty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and then it sold for four fifteen. Yep. It was a it was a very very good deal. It was a great. Deal. I'd like many more of those. <laughs> <laughs> and so you cleared eighty thousand dollars profit on this. Now now how 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 far into your twelve months in our program were you at this point? Uh, that was at the beginning. That was at the beginning. How far at the beginning? Well, it was, um, I started in May, but it was just before that. So yeah, we it was, was already we in was, play. We was, yeah. It was still happening, it was happening at that stage. Yeah, magic. Oh, excellent. So 80 grand, um, yeah, I mean, that's outstanding. To be able to make an $80,000 profit on a property you only paid two fifty five for, yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very cool. All right, so deal number two. Now, this is in my favourite suburb of Nine Eye. Um, tell us about this deal. This was a cute little house. It's um, <laughs> it's it's got appeal. There's something about it that's got appeal, and it's a um, it was already a three bedroom house, so there wasn't a lot we actually had to do with this. Um, we purchased this. It had been a rental, um, and we re- just reconfigured inside. So it stayed stayed a three bedroom, and there's there's the front. It was completely painted inside, outside roof, once again carpet. We um, just opened up the area so inside the, the, the kitchen and the, just created flow inside. So the kitchen and the lounge and dining room sort of all opened up and flowed together. Um, it's a nice, cute little house. The bathroom, we just put a, actually we didn't do a lot to the bathroom, but it had a completely new kitchen. Um, didn't need a lot of landscaping. Easy, yeah. in and out. It was a very, it was a, that was a three week reno. You know, three weeks. Three weeks. In wow, and out, that's quick. Yeah. So purchase is two hundred, rent is sixty, sold for two ninety five, mm-hmm. and just like a tidy thirty grand profit. Yep. And and we say this again and again, but this is what we consider just a complete bread and butter deal. Um, it's easy to do; they're not too hard to find. You renovate them quick, and um, people just lap them up because mm. they're done. Mm. They're totally and done. They look nice; they're new and mm. fresh. Magic. Once again, had an orange door. Yeah, orange door. Of course, <laughs> it had to have an orange door. So um. 
this is the front or the back? This is the back, isn't it? This is the back. Yep, this is the back. So this is um, uh, Hut Road yep. in... Um, this is in Petone. Petone? Yep. Is it Petone or is it Ellistown? No, it's Petone. Right. Because Petoni's better than Ellistown. Yeah, Petoni's so better than Ellistown. Was it, was it Ellistown when you bought it and Petoni when you sold it? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So this is the third deal that you've done um, yeah. in a very short period of time. Um, yeah, huge difference. Um, yeah, so that's the new deck out the back. And it was just, this was, once again, it was a rental. Um, and this is completely refigured again. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That, well, that was the original. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm glad um, that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely the original. And that's the, the after. Wow. So it was a complete new kitchen. It was a very nice kitchen. Um, tiled floors, new carpets, a new deck out the back there. And those bay windows, yeah, really yeah. set it off. Yes, yeah, stunning. And that was, that's what it was like. Yeah. I love that tap. Mm. It's very cool. All right, some numbers on this. So purchased at 310 rent out $40,000, sold for four forty five, making a tidy 40 grand profit. Yeah. So what are we talking here? 80, 30, and 40. So, you know, mm. pretty much a really mm. decent salary for the mm. first sort of 12 months, really. That's mm. great. And you're into another deal now? Yep, we just started another one today, um, which is in Apuni. Um, it's a, a three-bedroom changing to four-bedroom. Yep. And there's we've got two more coming up in the next four weeks. So things are moving. Busy, busy. Yep. You yeah. are. So you're going to be next year's Aaron. Basically, I'd like to be yeah. Nishi's Aaron. Look at that. It's not a bad result. I can't believe he stood me up though. Still too busy to turn up. That's that's despicable. Um, so really, this whole trip for you and being able to put these three or four deals together started at coming to our one day event in yes. Wellington. Is that about right? Yes, it was. We came along and, and listened to everybody and took notice and um, put our name forward that we wanted to carry on. And yeah, cool. And what made you? Um, did you hear some marketing? Did you hear a radio ads? Did you? Do one of these webinars. I think we actually got it. Um, I heard the webinars, but I think we got our tickets off the grab me. Well, the grab one job is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So, so realistically, you're sitting here now having made some really hefty profits yeah. and looking at a whole pile more properties. And 12, 18 months ago, you were possibly listening on the webinar like the people are tonight. Yeah, 12 months and, ago, yeah. And, you know, and looking at this and going, hey, I can do that. That's, that's just not as impossible as everybody mm. tries to make it seem at least. And there you go. So, I mean... We do um, a Wellington and an Auckland event, um, you know, once or twice a year. Um, we've just had our Auckland event um, in the last few days, and um, the last Sunday, and it absolutely sold out through the roof. We had 705 bookings when we stopped taking bookings, and um, it sold out like magic. It was absolutely lightning, and that was fantastic. We've got, I think, about 57 tickets still available for the Wellington event. There's 88 people online tonight, so I'm going to put a really decent deal toward, out for you. Um, we're going to put a package deal together. You're going to be able to get it from www.bookthedeal.co.nz, which is on the top of the screen there now. And we're going we're to chuck a bonus package together. And what it is is um, a whole pile of freebies, a whole pile of decent stuff, a whole pile of um, stuff from Resines and Bunnings, some webinars, some interviews, you know, a whole pile of just stuff that's useful and stuff that will help you get from where you are tonight through to being the next Joanne or the next Aaron who's going to be talking about some of the cool deals they've done and some of the stuff that they've they've racked up. Tell, tell me, what are you doing at 4 o'clock tomorrow morning? <laughs> Heading up the mountain. Going skiing. <laughs> Going skiing. Cool. So there you go. There's a lifestyle choice. You've, you've basically, you've done the hard yards and you can now have the ability to win the school holidays, take the kids and, and just shoot off skiing yeah. for a day or two. I don't know if 4 o'clock in the morning is bonus. No, I don't, I don't know if that is either really, you know. I mean... Yeah, that's pretty savage, but, you know, to be fair. So what we've done is we've put a really outstanding deal together, and we've put all of these bonus packs and bits and pieces together. You can go to bookthedeal.co.nz. There's a wee video there. Have a quick look at the video. I've put an extra special bonus in there for the next um, one hour only for the next 50 tickets to sell, and um, basically when that's done, I imagine we'll probably be sold out of Wellington. Um, the extra bonuses, um, well, I won't explain. You have a look at the video and go from there. But the video will play. You'll, you'll hear me having a quick chat uh, about the extra bonus that we've chucked in there, which is a bit of a nicety. Um, the ticket sale price for our full 10-hour one-day event, which is Sunday the 19th of October at the Intercontinental Hotel in Wellington, is going to be $9.95. And we can't make it any cheaper than that. That's actually less than what it costs us 
to feed you tea and coffee on the day at the event. So we're making it incredibly easy for you to come along and listen to us, listen to myself and my business partner, Sean Wood. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Joanne and I'm going to twist Aaron's arm and get him out from under whatever house he's in at the moment and grab maybe five or six more of more client, my clients and put them up on the stage in front of you and let you question them about us. Let you ask them about the property market. Let you ask the actual current clients, in your own words, ask them in their own words to explain what it is they're doing and how they're doing it. Because I tell you what, you're sitting there listening to this webinar and you can do the stuff that you've just heard. Because Joanne was sitting yeah. there, what, 12 months ago now? Yeah, yeah. And you were thinking the same thing. Yeah. I can do this stuff and you can. can. And I tell you what, I can't make it any easier than that. So all I need you to do is go to www.bookthedeal.co.nz Watch the quick video there. I've got a really decent, nifty, special bonus incentive on that video for you. But I can only hold that open for the next 60 minutes. So um, grab your hands on that. Go nuts. Grab yourself a ticket at $9.95. We'll see you on Sunday, the 19th of October. And when you do, go and um, give um, Aaron a smack on the shoulder and say, where the hell were you? I, I turned up. I did. Say, so, look, I turned up for the webinar, Aaron, and you were not there. And then um, you also go and find Joanne and thank you profusely for um, <laughs> being so nervous and being yeah. so nice to come along and spend an hour or so with us this evening. After I've told Aaron off. <laughs> yes, yeah, you'll have to do the same as well. So there you go. It's bookthedeal.co.nz. We can only hold it open for an hour because we've only got about 50 tickets left at that price point. Um, they'll be on grab one for forty nine ninety five from tomorrow again. Um, but we only have this very, very limited number of tickets for a limited period of time. So look, you know, grab your ticket there, go for it. Remember, $9.95, every ticket you grab is actually a double ticket as well. So drag, grab the husband, grab the wife, grab the business partner, grab the family member who might want to fund you into a few projects and reno deals, drag them along and show them what it is we're talking about and go from there. Um, and I look really forward to um, seeing you at the event. Sunday, 19th of October, there's already, already I think, 250 people booked and uh, it's looking like it'll be a sellout in Wellington again as it was last year as well. So uh, grab your tickets. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday the 19th. I'll be online for the next half an hour, 40 minutes, answering any questions you have. Um, I just want to thank Joanne professionally for, for turning for up. For turning up. For turning up. <laughs> and um, we'll be giving Aaron the bash for you. So, um, you know, maybe we'll grab him on another webinar in the future. But um, if you want to talk to him about his outstanding success, then by all means, come along to the event. We'd really like to see you. All right. Well, thank you very much for this evening. And um, as I say, write some questions into the software there and I'll answer them for you. And uh, we'll catch you again, hopefully, on Sunday the 19th of October. Thanks very much.